Hello, my friends. I've been missing from YouTube for over three weeks because I've been renovating my studio. Actually, my husband did most of the work, but I did help. And some of you wanted to see what I did, so let me show you. If you want to see the before, watch video number 167. I'll try to uh, remember to link it up above, but oh, what a mess it was. Now, I'm not quite done. I have another half of my junk to go through and bring back in here, but I'm really trying to um, streamline things and only use what I really need and what I think I'll use. Otherwise, I'm giving a lot of stuff away. So let's start. Let me go like this. And we'll start over here. I took the closet doors off the closet there and put those big wide shelves from uh, Home Depot in there. And I'm thinking I might use the bottom four shelves as a drying rack. So that'll be nice. So plenty of room for um, uh, storage of things. And up above, there's more room. There's my brush collection. I've got to go through all of those and see what I really need and group like brushes. But at this point, they're just all there. Paint, paint, paint. Um, oh, let me bring you down to the new floor. I, I had actually had carpet in here, if you can believe it. But this was a den. So my husband installed this vinyl plank flooring, and I'm really happy with it. Easy clean. I've already had a spill in here, not of paint, but uh, something sticky, and that cleaned up like a breeze. And I actually had three of those shelves. One of them I put in yet another spare room where um, I keep my finished paintings, unused canvases, and um, things waiting for embellishments. I mean, it's just another storeroom, I'm embarrassed to say. I did buy these two uh, metal racks which are a little narrower in depth so um, I have more room in the in the room and that's all paint I decided to sort them by paint brand in these bins now I don't know if that's the most efficient way to go but I do like to try to stick with one brand a lot of the time when I'm making a, a painting so the thing is they're all in one convenient location here, so I'm happy about that. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. <laughs> and of course, I do have more paint elsewhere, and I haven't even put it all in yet, so ugh. I'm going to give away all my craft paint. I have a lot of that, and I just probably don't use it. If I ever need it, I can go get it again. And that one um, doesn't have much on it yet. Those baskets are empty, I think. And in that empty space there, I'm going to put an old dresser that I had in the closet originally, and I'm going to paint it either white or the wall color, and then I'm going to put the TV on top of that, and then I'll gain more space there. And I don't have much on the walls yet. I'm going to try to keep it limited, kind of streamlined, but I might want to show you this one. This was an early piece I did when I first started pouring. I think it was what I would call my first wow piece. And I still like it. I was using just glue and water and very cheap Artist Loft, the big quart size paints. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. So I decided to frame that one and, and keep it. And that's a tablecloth on the window. I have a window covering on order. It should come soon. And just a old bookcase that keeps my um, reference books and my color pencil supplies there. And then I've got a couple more empty shelves. And over here I've got the two paintings I'm keeping. The one on the left was a uh, an early embellishment. And I just love it. I think he's so cute. And the, the painting itself is very bumpy. It's not... Uh, it doesn't look real good up close, but I think he's cute and I'm, I'm keeping him, although I did make note cards. And this pour is my most viewed video, so I thought it deserved a place in here. And I really like it. I'm very happy with the colors on that one. Uh, I've got the color wheel. 
And I found this at the Rose Bowl swap meet years and years ago, and I just think it's fun. That's there. And then over here is one of my most prized possessions. Let's see, this is from 1999, so where can I be without a glare? Over 22 years ago, I went to a seminar to learn how to paint these roses taught by Mary Jo Leisure, who is one of the queens of the decorative painting world. I mean, look at that rose, it's so beautiful. And it's a step-by-step -step, um, process. This was how she taught the class, and at the end of the class she had a drawing, and I was lucky enough to win it. It really means a lot to me because she's a special lady, and I wanted to learn how to paint these roses. It was a three-day seminar, and I had a lot of trouble because I was the only left-hander in the class, and she's right-handed, and it's very difficult to try to follow someone painting right-handed with your left hand. And I just... I was in tears at the end of the first night. I couldn't do it. And uh, she told me to come in early the next day. And she sat down with me and helped me learn how to reverse everything and um, have success. So I'm really grateful to her for that. It's a wonderful memory. And here's a piece that I did. Um, I've painted many roses since then, but this was... This is an old sewing machine box, a sewing box, I guess, that I had found at a thrift shop and I painted those roses on it. Sadly, I had it near my painting and I've splattered it with white. I've got to kind of go like that, get, get rid of them, it's terrible. But um, there are some of the roses that that I painted and I'm pretty happy with it. This piece doesn't really go in my room here, but um, it's very useful. It holds long rolls of transfer paper and, and things. It's got a little tray in the top for small items. So I think I'll probably stash it under the table, but uh, for now, that's where it is. So, oh, and I bought myself a new chair. It's small and compact. And I did order a tempered glass um, mat, office mat, to go under there. So, I mean, even though this floor, whoops, my finger's in the way, cleans up well, I don't want to have spills on it if I can avoid it. So at least that will help in that area. And I'm using an old table I've had for almost 50 years, the first piece of furniture I ever bought. <laughs> and... It's a good size, and I've found it to be to work out just fine. I just put a vinyl tablecloth on it, and I just replace it every once in a while. So, as I said, I have a lot more to bring in here, but I'm being very um, selective about what I bring in here. So I won't have nearly the mess I did before, and I'm really excited about creating in my new room. It's nice and bright. Oh, and one other thing we had lighting installed. Oh, there's my hand again in the ceiling because uh, before I just had, there was no overhead light. I just had a hot light, a lamp that I adjusted, but it's on a dimmer switch and there's four of them in the ceiling. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, my friends, I'm going to ring off now and get ready and get to pouring. See you soon. Okay, my friends, I am back. So, for my first pour of the year and my first pour in my new room, I'm going to do a Dutch pour in Valentine's colors. Because at the gallery next month, for the month of February, we're going to have the front room done up as a Valentine's uh, themed gift shop. And so, um, even though it seems early, I have to get this done by the end of the month, so really I only have about three weeks for it to cure and varnish and get it ready to submit there. So that's why I'm doing it now. And so my colors are red. I'm using Arteza's Crimson Red. And then I took some white and added 
a little bit of that red mix to come up with a, a pink. And then I took some, mixed up some white and added a little bit of that lighter pink to this one. So I have three shades of red. And then I mix some silver as contrast. So I think that's it. Let's get the base coat down. Um, I will put the recipe down below, but I used my usual 532, five parts Floetrol, three parts paint, two parts water. Easy peasy. And I hope I don't spill any red paint on my new floor. <laughs> All right, let's see if that's enough. Base coat, move it around. Now the base coat, um, that's exactly what I use, 532. And then the colors, because the paints are, um, you know, different consistencies, it can be, I start off with 532, but sometimes I have to add a little water and I make it the same consistency as the 532 base coat. So there you go. I usually do this off camera because I like to scoop up the excess that I tilt off. But I just want to get going on this and not have to splice more than two pieces together of this video. So I think we're good. Okay. I think I can take my gloves off for the rest of this. Now I'm going to lay down the, the lines with that shadow. I'm going to have to figure out with my new room, the lighting, where the best place for my, my table is. I may have to move the table. All right. Uh, I'm just, this is a fairly small canvas. It's a 14 by 18, I think. So um, I'm going to keep it simple. Just start here and go up there and then just maybe one more one more line oops forgot the one more line and I'll have this go up here Pink, not my favorite color, but kind of necessary for a Valentine's pour, I think. Get with this bit of silver now. And the light pink. Look at that. Okay, let's see what we get. I'm a little nervous because, as I said, it's been over three weeks, almost a full month since I have done anything. So, wish me luck, and here we go. I'm going to try the hair dryer. Oh, somebody did remark they wanted to know a little more about how I blow it out. So um, this is just a little travel dryer. And I've found that usually the low speed works well enough. But uh, I would suggest you start on low and see if that moves your paint around enough. Start up high 
and then slowly bring it down until you start seeing the paint move the way you like it. And if it's not enough, then you can move it up to high. And to kind of give it a kind of a wiggly traveling motion, I think. Let's give it a shot. So it's on low. Starting up high. So I see the paint start moving, and it's not really moving. Look, I'm about three inches away. I think I'm going to have to move it to high. Pretty. Uh, this is, I'm going to try to push some of the white back that way. This is a little too broad an area for me. Let's see if I can do that. And kind of like the solid red there. I'm going to leave that alone. I see the silver is starting to sell up a little bit. A little bit is okay. Just don't like big gloppy ones. So let me see if I can push that in. I like that. Now I did that on low and just reshaped that and I'm, I'm happy with that. Now the question is, is this too much negative space here? I like this part is good and I, I like that little change there. I'm wondering if I should just bring this out a little bit. Huh, kind of hate to because it's... Um, it looks pretty. And I wanted to save that. I'm going to stop and I'm going to use my skewer now to add some. Uh, no, I'm not. You know me. I can't. Uh, I'm going to add the bright red. I need a little bright red up here, I think. So I'm just going to take the stick and just apply some. I may not blow it out. I think I'll leave that as is. Kind of makes this make more sense if I have some undisturbed up there as well. Just not sure about this. I think I'm bothered by that. What to do? I don't want it to look like blood. <laughs> blow that out a little bit.
you know, I think that that may have been enough just to help that area now. Uh, instead of my usual curly cues, I was thinking of making heart-shaped ones. So let's see how that goes. Start over here. I mean, very similar. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that shape. Uh, let's see. I can hardly see that. How about Oh, I have an idea. I hope I don't regret this. I'm going to put a couple of dots and then take my skewer and turn them into a heart. That's kind of cute. Stop messing with it. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Yeah, I'll just sprinkle some of those around. Because this didn't work. I didn't care for that. Yeah, I'll put another one over here. Oops, made a little bigger. Okay. Dot. Dot. I'm not a hearts kind of person, but um, for Valentine's Day. Appropriate. <laughs> kind of cute. Um, I don't want to go crazy with them. I think I'll do another one here. Tuck one into this little. Oops! Oh my gosh! Don't do that. Well, I lucked out. I didn't plan to put. I have it right there. Oh. oh my goodness, be careful. I like things in um, uneven numbers. So I'm going to put one more little one down in this area dot, dot. Okay, actually I think the the heart when the two dots are touching is better, but I, I can't go back and fix those now. Anyway, <laughs> I think it's pretty cute. All right, my friends, let me bring you in for a closer look. So you have that heart or this one. That probably looks a little better. And I think when it dries and the silver, 
will add a nice shimmer to it. It could be quite pretty. Wow, this is a long video. Yeah, see, I, I don't like what I did there with that weird shape. But uh, there we go. My Valentine's pour. I did one last year that uh, was a ring and ribbon, and that one was pretty cute. I'll try to link that above so you can um, see a whole different version of a Valentine's pour. Was not a, well, I just said what it was. It was a ring and ribbon. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm out of practice. <laughs> so thanks friends for um, coming back and I appreciate all of you viewers and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.